springtime in New England, have you all noticed the most beautiful trees out there in bloom, the pinks and yellows and whites? They're just, the trees are gorgeous right now. Jesus is calling us to be like those trees in our faithfulness, to grow and share our own blossoms of love, faith, and truth that we know through our heavenly brother. And how do we do that? By giving of ourselves, our service, to benefit those who need our help. Our true fruitfulness comes from our relationship with God and Jesus and the spirit that flows through us. Give glory to God and your blossoms will bloom. Jesus tells us to love one another. Love is a blossom. Obedience to goodness in all things is a blossom. Joy is a blossom. Paul writes that love is patient, love is kind, love is generous. These are all our blossoms. John's music is definitely a blossom. Michelle Winkler's Gettings work with the refugees, big blossom. Maria asked us in Bible study, how do we show God's love to say a clerk in the grocery store? I usually try to compliment them on something. And just recently I got into quite a discussion about pea soup with the guy who was bagging my groceries. Mostly he did the talking and I listened. Listening is a blossom. An article in the Boston Globe caught my eye this week. The article was written by Je Jeff Jacoby and was titled, Welcome to the Promised Land. He speaks of the author of the book, A Beginner's Guide to America, Roya Akakian. She entered the United States as a refugee from Iran in 1985, not knowing a word of English. She is now an accomplished essayist, poet, and author. She describes how difficult it is to come from a country where every move is monitored, every decision final, and how here in America, we take our freedom for granted. Her love and gratitude for her adopted family, for her adopted country, shine through her words. America, she writes, remains the pioneer, however imperfectly, in accepting immigrants. Above all, perhaps, America is the great equalizer, the land where you can get to know the boogeyman of your past. Here, the detested or feared other of one's homeland, the Jew, the Pakistani, the Hutu, the Arab, is simply a fellow citizen. In America, someone, an immigrant who once would, who once have shunned, is the doctor who treats her illness or the mechanic who fixes her car. We, each and every one of us, has the freedom to choose how we show our fruitfulness or how we choose to ignore God and go our own way. So as broken as we feel as a country sometimes, we must remember to be grateful and to recognize the United States as the beautiful blooming tree that gives refuge and shelter, as imperfect as that may be. Can God prune our nation or is that up to us? Jesus tells us God, the vine grower, will remove every branch that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit will also be pruned to grow stronger and bear more fruit. So pruning by God is necessary. Yet pruning can be painful. It could signify the ending of relationships or the end of activities. God knows such pruning is necessary for growth and that Jesus is with us each painful step of the way. The vine, vine grower and the branches seem to be separate things, but they are all interconnected. They depend on each other. They're one with each other. 
God's pruning shows his love for us, even when we can't understand it. And we are never alone. We are always part of something bigger than we can imagine. Carl Jung, psychologist, wrote, Christ adds a new rung to the ladder of evolution, producing a new creature who lives in a new way to which the natural man can no more attain than a crawling thing can fly. And this daring claim cannot be laughed out of court, for Christ has done it. And we meet such new creatures every day upon the streets, and we are meant to be one of them, are intended so to live that others meeting us will look at us and look again and then from us to Jesus Christ. And that perhaps is the most signal way in which we can help Christ. Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you. This is an invitation to a growing relationship. This is a two-way street, dynamic, ever-changing, and always trusting, supportive, and comforting. Accept his words as balm for your soul. As long as we are in his presence, his strength becomes ours. As soon as we turn our back on him, our strength begins to fade. Being disconnected from the love of God, the passion of Jesus, and the mystery of the Holy Spirit is turning your back on true life. True life has love in it. God is not asking you to be a martyr, just to pay attention. Let your love flow through you as Jesus flows through you. And God will see the vine and branch are good. John begins this chapter with Jesus's words, I am. John does this many times. I am the true vine. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am reminds me of Moses coming down the mountain after receiving the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God tells Moses, you shall tell the children of Israel this, I am has sent me to you. Jesus is telling us he is. I am. There is no separation between God, the vine, and its branches. Until God does in the necessary pruning, of course. Give your glory to God. Sing praises to his name. May all your acts be filled with love in your heart. Our branches reach up to heaven with faithfulness, giving thanks for the earth and the sun, the glorious seasons, in this island earth we call home. I'd like to close by offering part of this poem by Amina Brown. God's ears don't play favorites. God's ears don't assess bank accounts or social status before they attune themselves to the story your tears or your fears are telling. God's ears are here for babies, for the immigrant, for the refugee, for the depressed, for the lonely, for the dreamers, for the widow, the orphan, the oppressed, and the helpless, those about to make a mess or caught in the middle of cleaning one up. Dirt, don't scare God's ears. God is a gardener. Thanks be to God. Amen.